Hi everyone, I want to talk about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. To start with, I uh, will advise that you kindly go over other presentations that I've published because one has covered heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And with that, you'll be able to get a clearer picture of what we are talking about here now. Okay, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction it, um, is formally called diastolic heart failure. There will be left ventricular wall stiffness here, and 50% of all patients with heart failure will probably have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. It is very common in elderly and females. The stiffness is going to occur in left ventricle. And when there is stiffness in left ventricle, there will be decreased compliance. That will in turn lead to increased filling pressure. And the increased filling pressure will lead to increased left, left atrial volume and pressure. And when there is left atrial volume and pressure, there will be backflow to the lungs, causing increased pulmonary congestion. Investigations here will be similar to what I presented while presenting diagnosis of heart failure one and two, but there will be a few things that will be different here because of the preserved ejection fraction and the real problem that is the left ventricular stiffness. Okay, generally, the diagnosis will be close, but on physical examination, you are going to find sustained apex beat. You're going to get increased blood pressure. When you even inspire the precardium, you might see him and papillary trill. You may not get displaced apex beats. And on auscultation, you are likely going to pick S1, S2, and S4 because there's going to be left ventricular hypertrophy. The wall of the left ventricle will be thick. On chest X-ray, no cardiomegaly. Is that surprising? Of course not. No cardiomegaly. Cardiomegaly is what I'm going to pick in most patients with reduced ejection fraction. It's not all patients without failure that will have cardiomegaly. So those with preserved ejection fraction will not have cardiomegaly. When you do your echo, you're going to find left ventricular apartrophy and left ventricular ejection fraction will be within normal range. So the name, preserved ejection fraction, is not a misnomer. Is appropriate. Then what are the possible culprits here? What are the causes of this type of heart failure? Okay, severe abstention, aortic stenosis, apartropic cardiomyopathy, autoimmune condition like amyloidosis, and of course myocardial infarction. They could all be responsible for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. But I wanted to note this. It might be transient, and you can ask, why that? That is when it is secondary to ischemic conditions. And why is it different from all other etiologies that I've listed above? Oh, yeah, it is. We call it ischemic conditions. It is not infected. Okay? So, when there is reperfusion, then the problem is over. So, and why do we even have the problem at all in ischemic condition when there is no infection yet? It is because ATP is necessary for realization 
of the ventricular myocardium. And during ischemic phase, we don't have the ATP. But immediately there's the reperfusion, and ATP is produced, and then realization is possible, then there'll be enough time for the ventricle to fill, and there'll be enough to eject. Okay. Also, preserve ejection fraction, heart failure patient, have more difficulty and can actually die early. They die from what? From exhaustion, from hypertension, from atrial fibrillation, from that ischemia if no reperfusion on time, from myocardial infarction, and of course, IV fluid overload. Why? They can't tolerate increased blood return to the heart. They can't. But if there's increased blood return to the heart, what's going to happen? That will lead to increased left atria and pulmonary venous pressure. And of course, it will be leading to dyspnea. And with dyspnea, there will be decreased aerobic capacity and increased risk of death. Atrial fibrillation decreases left ventricular failure and that would decrease stroke volume. How do we treat this condition? Be careful with following medications. Beta blockers, nitrates, and low dipine or nifedipine. As a matter of fact, any member of that hydropyridine Cousin channel blockers family. Please be careful. Did you see it's not okay, except you've discussed with the cardiologist and he or she has given you the go-ahead to make use of that. Diuretics is good, but not all diuretics could be used here. Spironolactone or renone are favored here. When you think ARB, that is angiotensin receptor blocker or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor is your option, please do that cautiously. But you are free to choose from spinolatum, epirinol, that is potassium sparing diuretics, contalidone, warfarin, amiodarone, and treat any associated disease or diseases. For example, most of the time, this condition is caused by myocardial infarction. So let that be put in order. Advise the patient to be compliant with medications as far as abstention and lifestyle modification are concerned. Get atrial fibrillation under control. You can do it too, and nothing about cardiomyopathy. But if it's possible, whatever remedies you can embark upon, let that be done. This epidemia, after fasting lipid value, you give appropriate medication and lifestyle modification, diet control. Lifestyle changes, decrease weight, increase exercise, as could be tolerated. Monitoring with atrial natural peptide, brain natural peptides, and terminal pro BNP. In fact, there's a separate presentation on all those three values. I mean, those three parameters. So you get their values, you get their functions, and situations where they may not rise or rise, and what that will mean while making the diagnosis. Consult to cardiologist will be a wise decision. With that, I'm going to end this presentation as far as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is concerned. My next presentation will be on high output heart failure. Thanks for listening. Kindly subscribe. Forward this to as many as you have on your list. And remember to give me a thumbs up. Okay?
wishing all affected people well. Thank you.